Hello, my name is Micah Lanasa, and I'm a technical writer for Forefront Online Protection for Exchange. This is the third video in my series introducing you to the Administration Center. Previously, we looked at the Information tab and the Company and Domain subtabs. We'll start this video at the Users subtab. There are several different ways to add users to your account. While not required, we recommend using the Directory Synchronization tool, as I mentioned previously. We can add users individually by going to the Users subtab and selecting Add User. I'll add a user now and click Save. At this point, the new user has no options configured beyond an email address. I can click Edit to set the name, language, and time zone of the new user. Notice that the domain service settings are inherited. If you'd like to add multiple users at once, you can import a CSV file that includes the details for the users. Under the Service Settings section, I can disable any of the filtering options for this particular user. They are all enabled by default, but I am able to change them on a per-user basis. Under the Security section, I can set the new user's password. I can also grant him administrative permissions. No administrative permissions are enabled by default, but by default users can access the quarantine, provided it is active on the domain and end users have access allowed as configured on the domain. I'll select the Reporting User permission. Notice that I can set the scope to be for the entire company or a domain. Disabling a user's permission can be accomplished by clicking Remove next to the permission. OK, let's go back to the Users subtab. Notice that I can enable and disable users here. To delete the new user, I'll first select the account, disable it, and then I'll go to the Disabled User Accounts view. Now I can select the account and click Delete. Note that the option to delete a user is only available if the customer does not have a subscription to the archive service. Let's move to the Policy Rules sub-tab. Here you can create and manage policy rules, which allow you to enforce specific company policies by configuring customizable filter rules. For example, you could create filters that reject emails containing a certain phrase in the subject line, or have a certain attachment file type. I'll click New Policy Rule. Under the Rule Settings section, we can set the scope and the action. Notice under the Action drop-down menu, we can select Test or Force TLS. We can configure notifications to be sent to the sender, recipient, and administrator. We can configure the triggers of the rule here under the Match New Policy Rule section. Notice how many different options there are here to configure. We can filter emails based on sender and recipient information, attachments, text in the subject and message, and more. Under Actions, you can save the rule or cancel. Alright, let's move to the Filters sub-tab. Here, you can add and manage large lists of values for multiple policy rules. Under Tasks, I can click Import Dictionary. Dictionaries are large lists that contain IP addresses, keywords, domains, email addresses, file names, and extensions that you want to quickly use in various policy rules. Utilizing these lists can be faster than manually entering hundreds of keywords or email addresses in the Policy Rule Editor. Once you have imported the dictionaries, you would be able to manage them here. You can import either text or CSV files. Now, I'll quickly head back to the Policy Rules sub-tab. Notice under the Various Options in Match New Policy Rule section that there is a Use Dictionary for Match option. Here is where you would use the dictionaries you create. Alright, in my next video, we'll look at the My Reports and Tools tabs.